Hey everybody, welcome back to another Leftover Remain stencil tutorial. Today we're going to be dealing with the enemy. About damn time, right? So anyway, I already set up the enemy here just to speed things along. So I uh, added an enemy. Then I went over here and I named the animation right. And I duplicated it and I named one left. And to do that all you have to do is click down here and then just click flip horizontal. And to duplicate, all you have to do is just click this little duplicate animation button and then rename it because it'll say copy of. So then I came over here into the collisions and I came to the, well, this one. And I, I can zoom in by doing that. That way I can adjust these uh, shapes however I want. You can also add a circle if you want or a polygon. It doesn't really matter. But then I went ahead and I added a, oop, got a reload here. I added an enemy attribute and you can do that by edit and then just make an enemy and then click what it can and can't touch. I decided to allow it to touch other enemies so the main character it can also be touched by the main character. So I just wanted to make one thing clear. Uh, you should always make one animation, do the collisions, then make a duplicate because if you don't Let's say this was my first here, and that was what I did, and I went and I made a duplicate straight off the bat, and then I decided to implement it, and that means that for each animation, individually, you would have to make a new, um, you'd have to sit there and type an enemy, you'd have to sit there and change the collisions. But if you just did it, you know, if you made one animation, did the collisions, did the, uh, the little collision box here along with the group then you duplicated it that would save you a lot of time because if you have like five six seven animations for one character then having to go and sit individually and change all these and then sit there and change this one would take more time and you wouldn't get a lot done and then in the physics I went ahead and made sure that it cannot rotate because then it'll just be walking all over the place and flip flopping and then I came over here to the material and I lowered the friction to zero and that became ice so now it can slide across the floor with ease now I also went ahead and I added a little walking script of my own so it says when current animation for self is left the x speed is set to minus three when it's set to right, the X speed is set to three. And then I went ahead and I added in a collision that said, when the left side gets touched, it gets switched to right. And when the right side is touched, then the animation is switched to the left. That way it kind of knows what to do and you don't have to set up this long script. And it's a little slow, but I wanted to make sure that my main character could at least run. So you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little faster for my main character because he is just too damn slow now. I'm gonna. <sighs> okay, there we go. I'm gonna add in. Let's make it 10 this time. I'm gonna set it up twice the f speed. Alright. And I'll try that again. And he should be flying like crazy now. Oh, yeah. There he goes. Now. Right now, boop, boop, you can make like a little Pong game, but that's boring. Nobody likes Pong anymore. It's old school. So you obviously want to have him to do something, right? So we're going to go back into the enemy, and we're going to say <sighs> the um, if the top is pressed, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Don't want to care about that. Anyway. So, if the top was pressed, then you're going to want to kill it. So, now this also means that other things can also kill him, but this is the basic kind of form how it's done. You're also going to want to set it so that it can always be moving around because if it goes off the off screen boundaries, um,. Well, actually, if you have some off-screen boundaries set to how it was with the 500 and the 500, then you should be okay. But if you didn't have that, then if as soon as it goes off-screen, it would just stop moving. Like, it would just 
wait for you to move the screen over and then it would start moving again so you would notice like a little a halt so I'm just going to try this again boom dead now you also want to make sure that the main character when it gets touched like that then it dies so you're going to want to set up a little more complex uh, script here let me pause the video real quick okay so anyway I went ahead after I paused the video I added in an extra thing so what it is is you add an event collisions actor of type and then it'll say when self hits a blank you can choose the enemy I'll just delete that because I don't need that and then you can you can have a couple of options here if the left was hit and if the right was hit so pretty much it's like a Mario-esque type of setup here so you can either kill the main character but then that won't really do you anything you can have the main character you can have the uh, uh, the player get sent back to a certain scene you can either send them to the main scene or to the preloader or whatnot or you can just reload the scene entirely and then set up a script so if you have lives like lives times three just say reload and then subtract you know a live minus one so I'm gonna put one in each so you can see the difference here and I will test it okay that was that one and you know what I'm gonna actually change that because we don't want him the enemy to die uh, with just any old thing so if the main character hits him so let's grab this Oop. don't want that copy it I'm gonna paste it right on in there that way only the main character can be the one to kill him and that should be all I have to do so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this load again <laughs> and then it reloads so as you can see when this touches oh no then he restarts the crossfade there's all sorts of stuff you can be adding to it but I don't really get into that because they all look terrible anyway where did it go it was over here yeah, so there's crossfade, slide up, slide down. So, you know, if you try one of those, and you can of course change the time to zero, so it just immediately resets. So you can change it to two, and it gives it an even longer fade or a crossfade. Um, the other one, I don't really, s yeah, like that. Look at that. What is that? You know, right? It's like a book. Um, so for the fade out. You can have bubbles out, blinds out. I don't really mess with that stuff because, eh. I mean, why? But then again, you know, if your game calls for something like that, then hell, by all means, go for it, you know. And then again, it doesn't really seem to do anything anyway. There is no bubbles. I didn't see any bubbles. And, uh, oh wait, dir, that's because <laughs> I had that off. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Whoa. LSD going, all right. Well, anyway, that should be all for this tutorial. I will get more into enemies that require um, health, so maybe I'll set up um, a later script that actually allows you to have health and hit points and I'll also allow the enemy to have hit points so you're gonna have to either shoot him or stab him or jump on that person enough times to kill them but that's another tutorial anyway thanks for watching